Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at how to flash Raspberry Pi OS on an SD card. To do so, first of all we're visiting raspberrypi.org and we are navigating to software and here we are, Raspberry Pi OS. As you can see here, it was previously called Raspbian. So don't confuse those two names, it's basically the same, it's just the newest version that's called from now on Raspberry Pi OS. It's basically a distribution of Debian, which is a distribution of Linux. So basically it's Linux based, it's just specially made to fit perfectly to the Raspberry Pi's hardware capability. So it's quite lightweight operating system and the process of flashing it to an SD card is basically the same for each operating system. No matter whether it's Raspberry Pi OS or the previous version Raspbian or another kind of, of, a, of an operating system. First of all we need to download Raspberry Pi OS itself. To do so we go down here to see all download options and we can download Raspberry Pi OS desktop and recommended software or only the desktop version or the light version. So today we're going to talk only about those two versions. The desktop version itself comes along with only the operating system and that's it, no kind of special applications. But if we download the recommended software version, we will have a bunch of necessary software that's quite useful to have a smooth start with the Raspberry Pi. For example, Node-RED or other coding software or just a bunch of applications that are quite nice to, for a smooth start. So we will hit download the recommended software version. It will take some time, it's about 3 GB and we just have to wait those few minutes. So after we downloaded the operating system itself, it's called the image, it's about 3 GB and we can basically start now to flash it to an SD card. But there are two ways now. First option is like it was done before, is we are using a software, for example Balena Etcher is the software I'm going to use. It's a software that's enabling you to flash the image onto the SD card and then you can just start right away with this, with this SD card. But from now on there's a new way to do it. It's basically launched directly from Raspberry Pi. So if you're going back to software, we skipped this option here before. It's called download from macOS and we're talking about the installer. So once we hit download here, it just takes a few seconds, just 18 MB or something. We can install the installer made by Raspberry Pi. It's basically the same like Balena Etcher, but it's especially made to flash Raspberry Pi OS to an SD card. So once we install the installer, we can start it right away, choose an operating system, in this case Raspberry Pi OS. Once again, we can choose between the light version and the full version. We choose the full version, we choose the storage device, in this case it's our 32 GB SD card already in our hardware drive and now we can just hit write. Now it's just reminding us that there is something stored on this SD card. If you buy them right away from the store there's always some kind of readme data or whatever on the, on the SD card. We click yes and it's going to ask us for the password and now it's taking its time so Raspberry Pi installer is a nice smooth way to do it, especially if you're a newbie. But there are other ways, as I mentioned before. Raspberry Pi installer is especially for flashing Raspberry Pi OS onto an SD card. But of course there's the case that you want to flash an older version or another kind of operating system onto your SD card. So for all those cases I recommend you again Balinatcher. You can just hit download for macOS or whatever kind of operating system you're using. Once you downloaded the Balena Etcher, it's looking like this. You hit flash from file. We, you remember we downloaded it before. We just have to search for the right image. In this case it's Raspberry OS. 
Buster full version. So we choose this file from our download folder. We select the target, same target. It's, it's basically the same process like at the Raspberry installer. And we just hit flash and it's doing its work. Once again, it's asking for our password. I, I've chosen an easy password for this video. So now we can see it's going to flash. We see an estimated time it will need, in this case four minutes. And afterwards it will do a validation. So just check out the validation. And we are done. So flashing is over. Now it's going to validate the whole process. It will again take about the same amount of time. You can also skip this step, but it's better to do so. So we will we will wait those five minutes again and afterwards the validating will be over. By the way, if you have a faster SD card, of course there are differences in speed. So please invest one or two euros more to buy a fast SD card because otherwise you have to wait. It's really a better way to invest some more money into a fast SD card. It will be faster during the flashing process and it will be faster later on while you're using your Raspberry Pi. While we are waiting, I want to show you the SD card I'm using here. A lot of people are using the normal standard SD cards you can buy in every shop, but I want to encourage you to buy the high endurance versions, for example here from SanDisk, but also from other companies there are high endurance versions around. Normal SD cards are very difficult to predict how long they will last. They are not made for everyday intensive use. So these high endurance SD cards are especially made for everyday 24-7 usage. In this case you can see they promise 20,000 hours of usage. They are especially made for something like dash cams or stuff like this where it's really long hours in use and always a lot of hours in a row. It depends on how you're go going to use your Raspberry Pi, whether you use it as a media center and it's only working while you are watching TV or so, or whether you use your Raspberry Pi as an IoT device, which is running 24 seven. In this case, it's really recommended to use those high endurance versions, or whether you're using your Raspberry Pi just to play around, Google a bit or whatever, or play Minecraft, whatever you have to do in this case, maybe it's not so necessary to use a high endurance version. There's also the max endurance version and you see it's just some bucks more and the max endurance version is even up to 120,000 hours of usage. That's really a lot and you see it's much more than the high endurance version and the normal standard versions they are often not giving any kind of of how many hours or whatever kind of or years or hours normally they, they tell you how many years but they're not specifying how many hours this uh, is resulting in so anyway i recommend the high endurance version or even the max endurance version with 20,000 hours it's already quite good with 120,000 hours you are really really safe for example, if you divide, we do it together, if you divide 120,000 hours, you can divide it by 24, it's 5,000 days. If you divide it again by 365, you see it's like more than 10 years, it's almost 14 years here. So that's really a lot. If you now divide it by 6, which will result in those 20,000 hours from the high endurance version, it's still more than two years. So if you're talking about an IoT, an IoT use case, for example, a weather station or something like this, and you're planning to use it in your private house for the next years, I would go for the max endurance version. I guess it's worth spending those five bucks or so more. If you're only talking about kind of an IoT device that's only used yeah, time by time or media center or so, I guess the high endurance version with more than two years in a row is enough. It's like two more than two years, 24 seven usage. That, that's really a lot and really only IoT applications are running in 24 seven. So only here the max endurance version is necessary, but for each other application, I guess high endurance is more than enough. But you've seen the notification, our flashing process is over. 
you see here one SD card successfully flashed it's already validated and we are good to go you can flash another one or we just eject the SD card put it into our Raspberry Pi and we're good to go so that's everything you need to know we just checked out where to download the image file of Raspberry Pi OS you've seen that you can do it with Balena Etcher really recommending this one because you can use it for all other kind of images you want to flash to a USB drive or even an, an SSD or an SD card or whatever you want and you also have a quick look on the Raspberry Pi installer where you can do it in a very convenient way if you're only talking about Raspberry Pi OS and you want to have a smooth start. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching. This was another video from Blueprint IoT. Check out our other videos about IoT and everything around if you're interested. See you next time.